Welcome back to the Sim Hangar, everybody. My name's Mark. Thanks for watching, and let's get started. If you're planning on following along, set up your Bravo throttle quadrant with the commercial handles as shown. These are the default throttles that come with the Bravo when you purchase it. In the second part of this video, and there's timestamps below, we'll also be looking at the configuration for the Honeycomb Airbus throttle pack. This is a set of throttle handles available directly from Honeycomb. Link in the notes below. Also linked below will be my video where I reviewed the throttle pack, so you can watch that if you want to. By now you've got your throttle quadrant set up as pictured, so let's get on with the configuration. Once you're in SIM, from the main menu select World Map. Then from the top left hand side, let's select the aircraft and we're looking for the Phoenix Airbus 320. Doesn't matter what livery you choose, the configuration is standard across all. For this guide I'm going to choose Brussels, the Belgian livery, and now time to select an airport. Select any airport you like. I'm going to choose Aerosoft's amazing Brussels. Select yourself as starting on a runway, as we'll need to test our config and let's go fly. We're in the Phoenix A320 and we've now spawned on the runway. And our first port of call is the tablet. Just click on the fingerprint to gain access to the tablet. And from the menu option, we want the top left. The Phoenix logo, let's click on that. And we get a number of setup configurations available. The one we're looking for is panel states. Click on panel states and then select ready and activate. So we're now on the runway with our engines running in a taxi ready state, which will allow us quick and easy access so we can test our configuration. That's all we need to do here. We can now exit from the tablet. That's our basic setup all done. Now we can start getting into the configuration guide. Firstly, using the commercial handles. Hit escape on your keyboard and from the menu option, we want control options. Once you're in the control options menu, make sure that the Bravo throttle quadrant along the top is highlighted. If not, click on it. You now have a choice of modifying an existing profile or creating a new one. In my case, I'm going to modify an existing profile. And it's one I created recently for the PMDG 737. If you don't know how to modify an existing profile, my configuration video for the 737 started from the default twin prop profile. Then I suggest you follow that profile initially to bring you back here to our starting position. I've now selected the 737-700 profile, but of course I don't want to overwrite this. So let's head to the Preset Manager, and I'm going to duplicate this profile and then modify it. Select the second icon there, which is Duplicate, and rename it. You can call it anything you like. Once renamed, hit OK, and we've created an exact copy of our previous profile. Everything's carried across. Make sure your new profile is showing as the active profile under the Bravo Throttle Quadrant. Let's now modify this profile. If you are modding from the 737 profile, we need to change our landing gear assignments. If not, you don't have to worry about this step. The 737 had an odd configuration for the gear. We're now changing these assignments back to default. Rescan, move your gear up, registers as joystick button 31. Ignore the reassigned warning, we know that. Move the gear lever back down so it recognizes the assignment, odd behavior by Microsoft Flight Simulator, and then validate. Now let's set gear down, so move the gear up physically on the Bravo throttle quadrant, click on the box, start scanning, move the gear lever down, joystick button 32, move the gear lever back up, and we can validate. We are now back to the default landing gear assignments. Now let's head to Power Management and Throttle. The reverse function works differently on the Phoenix A320, so we need to delete a number of assignments. For both Throttle 1 and Throttle 2, we need to delete the Throttle 1 or Throttle 2 decrease and Throttle 1 and Throttle 2 cut assignments. Throttle 2 decrease first, we select Clear Current Input and Validate, and it's gone. Do this for both Throttle 2 cut and the Throttle 1 assignments. Do not delete the access assignments. As per the 737, our throttle 1 is on axis 3, 
and Throttle 2 is on Axis 4. We can give them a quick test, make sure they're working. That's all good, reverse axis is not checked. Now time to set up our reverses. On the left hand side, change your filter to All. So we can see all the power management throttle assignments. Then once again, we're going to choose Throttle. Make sure all the assignments are expanded and we want to page right down to the very bottom. And we're looking for Hold Throttle Reverse Thrust. There it is. Click in the box to select the configuration for this option. Unfortunately, there's no individual throttle assignment for this function. We have to apply it to all throttles. Select the scanning box, then being careful not to move the main axis, move the reverser levers up and down on both throttle 1 and throttle 2. This should show you joystick button 10 and 11. We're happy with that. Validate. And this assignment tells the sim we're going into reverse. Next, look for Decrease Throttle. Not Decrease Throttle 1 or 2, just Decrease Throttle. There it is. Once again, we're going to select the box. Make sure both throttles are in the idle position, not in the detent, and reverser handles down. Start scanning, then on Throttle 1, move the reverser up. Then push Throttle 1 all the way down in the detent position. Now do exactly the same for Throttle 2. Reverse lever and into detent. We should now have four buttons assigned. Throttles back to idle, push the reverse levers down, and we're now ready to validate. Click on validate, so we now have 10, 11, 26 and 27 buttons assigned to decrease throttle. We can now select apply and save to save all these configuration changes to the profile. And if you're following from the 737 profile, one more thing we just should check quickly and that was we set the toga on the throttle 1 axis. To make sure that's not conflicting with anything, we can search by input from the menu on the left hand side. We can click in the box, then press the small red button on throttle 1, auto throttle to GA, it's not conflicting with anything, we can leave that alone. Just a note, I haven't had time to test whether that's working Let's head back to our cockpit because we've got further configurations to do in the Phoenix. Once in the cockpit, we want to go to the FMC and click the McDo menu button. Should be as shown by default. We want to select configuration. It's the second button on the bottom on the right. And now we want to go to controls configuration. It's the last button at the bottom on the left. Select that. I have a previous calibration, so I'll just delete that. You won't have that. Now we have to configure our throttles and flaps. So select Calibrate. And it'll come up and ask you to set max reverse thrust. Don't do that. Leave both throttles at idle. If you follow the instructions for the Bravo, you're going to run into problems and find things don't work. Both throttles left at idle, then click Next Step. It says set max reverse. Do nothing. Just leave them at idle and click next step again. Ask you to set idle, leave everything as it is and click next step. So for the first three steps we left our throttles at idle. It's now asking us to set climb. For this we do need to move our throttles. Move both throttles up, looking at the Bravo throttle quadrant and not in sim to a suitable position. For me the front of the throttles are just at the end of the solid lines. Then click next step. It's asking us to set flex or maximum continuous thrust. I've moved the throttles up to the next mark. And next it asks us to set toga or takeoff go around. I push the throttles fully forward. My throttles are set. Now to save this configuration, select store calibration and they'll be saved in sim. The warning sound you can hear is because the throttles are advanced and we're not in a takeoff configuration. Notice in the top right hand corner there's a small arrow on the McDo. Select the appropriate arrow on the McDo keypad. This will take us to our side stick and rudder settings. These all use default and they should be okay. The percentages do show you if anything's offset or not. But for me that all looks okay. Click the arrow again and it takes us to the flap setting. And it should say flaps not calibrated. So let's click on Calibrate and it says set flaps to up. Move your flap lever, make sure it's all the way up. 
and then select next step asking us to set flaps to 1 move your flap lever to the appropriate position and select next step again it will then go on and ask you to set flaps for position 2 position 3 and flaps full go ahead and do that clicking next step after each stage if you're not sure where to move the flap lever to, there's an indication on the Bravo for the various flap position and on the MacDo there's also percentage shown. That's done, we now need to save the calibration, click store calibration and we're done. It's now time for us to test whether everything's working. First of all, let's test the spoiler, the speed brake. Currently in the fully up position, I'm going to move it fully down and back up again that all seems to be working fine I'm happy with that at the end of this video we'll have a look at the external view of these actions but for now that's fine now I'm going to check the flaps that's flaps 1 now I'm going to move the flaps through all the different settings and then back up to flaps fully retracted that calibration is held all working fine let me just retract my air brakes and now time to test the throttles first of all throttle one that's moving through the various axes that's fine same with throttle two if we just adjust our view here we'll be able to see the engine readouts to make sure the engines are reacting exactly to the throttle movements throttle one there spooling up that's fine and the same with throttle two all good there and now both throttles together I move them both to the climb position and that matches perfectly in sim. Now throttles fully forward and again it's matching on the Bravo throttle quadrant and in sim. Happy with the calibration. Now it's time to test the reverses. Both my throttles are at idle but behind the idle position is a reverse idle position. We can move to that by moving both the small levers up on the throttle quadrant and we can see in sim we have moved to reverse idle. We can move out of reverse idle by pushing the levers forward and just giving the throttles a small nudge. And we're back to idle. You could perhaps configure a throttle cut on release, but I haven't bothered with it. It works quite well as it is. Back to reverse idle. Now let's move the throttles down and engage full reverse thrust. And we can hear the engine pitch sound change as the engines go into full reverse. And we can see that indicated on the N1 and EGT display. Move my throttles back to idle and I go back to reverse idle. Now push the small reverser levers on the quadrant forward, give the throttles a small nudge and we're back into idle. So our throttles are working fine, just a comment on the trim. I've left the trim configuration at default and it works fine. And I must say in the Phoenix A320 it's very responsive indeed. And that completes our setup for the commercial handles. Next we'll have a look at the configuration for the Honeycomb Airbus throttle pack and then we'll have a look at external views. Making sure your Bravo throttle quadrant is selected and highlighted, you now have a choice of modifying an existing profile or creating a new one. In my case I'm going to modify an existing profile. And it's one I created recently for the PMDG 737. If you don't know how to modify an existing profile, my configuration video for the 737 started from the default twin prop profile. Then I suggest you follow that profile initially to bring you back here to our starting position. I've now selected the 737 700 profile, but of course I don't want to overwrite this. We're going to select the preset manager from the bottom menu and then select the second icon along duplicate and then rename. You can call it anything you want. Once done, click OK and this new profile should now be the active profile for the Bravo throttle quadrant. Make sure you've watched the setup section earlier in this video as this is a duplicate of the 737 profile and that profile had a very odd gear deployment configuration we need to change the landing gear back to default with our gear lever physically in the down position click in the gear up box start scanning and we'll overwrite this profile by moving the gear lever up joystick button 31 ignore the warning and validate 
Remember with Microsoft Flight Simulator you need to move in and out on the binding to make it hold. Now gear down. Make sure your gear is physically in the up position. Click on the box and let's start scanning and overwrite it by moving our gear lever down. Button 32, that's correct. Validate and our gear is back to the default. Now let's head to the power management section and throttle. Make sure your filter is on assigned. Reverses work differently for the Phoenix, so we need to delete a number of mappings here. Throttle 2 decrease and throttle 2 cut and the same for throttle 1. Click on the item, then check clear current input and validate. Do that for throttle 2 cut and throttle 1 decrease and throttle 1 cut. Do not delete throttle 1 and throttle 2 axis, as these are still valid. On axis 3 and 4 as per our 737 setup. It's now time to set up our reverses. Change the filter on the left hand side from Assigned to All. Then head back to Power Management and Throttle. All the configuration options should be displayed and we want to page pretty much down to the bottom and we're looking for Hold Throttle Reverse Thrust. This action tells the sim we're heading into reverse. Click on the box, start scanning, then making sure you don't move the main axis Move the reverser levers up on both throttle 1 and throttle 2, buttons 30 and 48. Then move the levers back down again so that we can validate this mapping. It's an oddity of the sim, but you need to move in and out of a mapping in order to validate. There, we're done. I don't know if you noticed, but we got a warning when we move throttle 1 reverse lever up. Something else was assigned. We can check that by using the search by input and activating the button again. And we can see something else has been assigned, Auto Throttle to GA. We can now select that and clear current input to get rid of the duplicate, or alternatively we can reassign it to one of the buttons on the Airbus throttle levers, joystick button 10. Note I haven't had an opportunity to test TOGA function with the Phoenix. Always keep your eye out for possible conflicts. Anyway, back to our throttles, power management and throttle, Make sure the mappings are once again displayed. And now we want to page right down to the bottom. We're looking for decrease throttle. Not decrease throttle 1 or decrease throttle 2, but decrease throttle. There it is. Select the configuration box so we can enter our bindings and then start scanning. Make sure throttles are idle and reverses forward. First of all, we're going to move the reverser on throttle 1 up and then on throttle 2. Buttons 30 and 48. Then throttle 1 and throttle 2 in full reverse into the detent. Then move both throttles out of detent back to idle and both reverse levers pushed forward. And now we can validate. So we now have four buttons assigned to the one function. Decrease throttle. This is necessary as the hold throttle reverse thrust function applies to all throttles and is not individually selectable. OK, we're done. We can now jump into the sim to continue our configuration for the Phoenix. We need to set up and calibrate our throttles, flaps, etc. within the Phoenix as well. Otherwise, the bindings won't work. This is a critical step and has to be completed to get the correct function. Once back in sim, make sure you're on the MacDo menu. You can check that by simply hitting the button marked MCDU menu. Then select the config option. It's the second button from the bottom on the right hand side. And the process is exactly the same as, as I covered step by step for the commercial handles. Please review that in the previous section and carry out those instructions. Once you've completed that, we can then test that it all works correctly. You've now calibrated your axis, so we can now test. First of all, let's check the spoiler or air brakes. That seems to be moving in sync. Happy with that. Now we can check the various positions for our flaps and make sure throttle quadrant and in-sim movements are synced, which they are. Flaps full, now moving them. Flaps retracted. All good here. We can now test our throttles and we can see from the engine gauges N1 and EGT are responding appropriately. Throttle 1 and 2 working fine. Let's now test the reverses. 
throttles currently are at idle. If I lift the two reverse levers up, note the throttles have moved to reverse idle, which is correct. If I push the reverse levers down and give the throttles a nudge, the throttles then return to normal idle. Lifting the levers again and going into full reverse. And both throttles are moving into full reverse. Perfect. And we can see that being indicated on the engine displays. Leaving the reverser handles engaged, move back to idle and we go back to reverse idle. Push the levers forward and we return to throttle idle. That's working great. Let's now have a look at these actions externally. Let's now have a look at an external view. Firstly our air brakes or spoilers. They are rising but only a small amount. But that's as it should be as we're stationary. They'd raise more if we were moving faster. Now we can check our flaps. Yes our flaps are extending as well as the front slats. So we can have confidence that our flaps are working. Let's now check our throttles. First of all put it into reverse idle. That seems to be okay. Let's go back to normal idle. Just need to nudge the throttles forward. Might need to put in a cut command there. And now let's check the reverse. First of all some forward momentum. So let's push the throttles forward just to get going. And then what we'll do, we'll go into full reverse. It should slow us down and then we should start moving backwards. If that happens, then we know they're working correctly. That looks good, we're moving back. And for our last test, we're just going to check that our gear is deploying correctly. Gear up, and the gear should start to retract, which it is. Beautiful animations from Phoenix. Just as a double check, let's put the gear down again. Yep, that's all looking good. Phoenix have done a wonderful job in recreating the A320. And I hope this video provides enough to get you up and away. Don't forget to like this video if you think it was useful. And subscribe if you want to see more like this. I noticed that the autopilot and the lights on the Bravo throttle quadrant weren't working, but I haven't really had the time to dig in and investigate. But at first glance it appears they're not compatible as well as the switches with their default settings. But of course I will investigate if I get the time later on. Are you enjoying the A320 from Phoenix? If you've got better config ideas let me know in the comments below. Thanks very much for joining me today. I hope you found this useful and informative. Stay well, look after yourselves and bye for now.